Effect is Friday, July 13th. I'm John Berman, live in London. Allison is in New York. Allison, can you hear it? Kaboom. That is news. Welcome to our viewers in the United States and all around the world. This is New Day. It is Friday, July 13th. I'm John Berman, live in London. Allison is in New York. Allison, can you hear it? Kaboom. That is the sound that went off overnight here in London. A political explosion set off by this. This article, this interview that President Trump gave to the Sun. He's meeting with the British Prime Minister Theresa May very shortly at Chequers, her country estate, maybe trying to pull the knife out of her back that he put there. Or maybe not. In this extraordinary interview with the British tabloid The Sun, owned not coincidentally by the president's friend Rupert Murdoch, the president directly undermined the position of Theresa May at a moment when her position hangs in the balance. The president criticized the way May is trying to remove the United Kingdom from the European Union. He said he would do it differently and that she is not taking his advice. What's more, the president lavished praise on May's chief political rival, saying that Boris London's mayor for his stance on immigration. He said Europe is losing its culture. Think about that. I wonder what that means. On top of all of that, the president is complaining about feeling unwelcome in London because of all the public protests, many of them taking place as we speak. That Trump baby balloon, you can see it right there, is still flying. Not far behind me where I'm sitting right now, I can't see it. It's sort of hidden by Big Ben, but it's up there. That has caused quite a stir. Thousands of people expected on the streets of London today, where the president conspicuously will not be. He says he feels unwelcome. Let's go first to our White House reporter, Caitlin Collins. She is live in here uh, in London, Caitlin. And unclear what the president was trying to do with this interview, but what he did do was upend this two-day visit to the United Kingdom. John, there was already going to be a fair amount of tension during this meeting between the president and Prime Minister Theresa May. And the president, with this interview, just undercut her on her own turf and said things that uh, were about as politically damaging to a weakened prime minister here in London as you can get. The president criticizing her plan for Brexit, something that has caused two of her very senior cabinet officials this week to resign. He threw cold water on the potential of a U.S.-U.K trade deal and he praised her political rival in this stunning interview. Listen to what he said about her plan for Brexit. I would have done it much differently. Uh, I actually told Theresa May how to do it, but she didn't agree with She didn't listen to me. I think the deal that she's striking is not what the people voted on. It's a much different deal than the people voted on. Um, it was not the deal that was in the referendum. If they do that, uh, I would say that that would probably end a major trade relationship with the United States. I was very uh, surprised and saddened that he was getting out of government. Mm. And you lost some other very good people. Well, I'm not pitting one against the other. I'm just saying I think he'd be a great prime minister. But, John, it wasn't just those bombshell remarks that the president made in that interview that are now on the front page of essentially every newspaper here in London. This is what the president had to say about immigration. I think what's happened to Europe is a shame. I think the immigration, uh, allowing the immigration to take place in Europe is a shame. I think mm. it changed the fabric of Europe. Mm. And unless you act very quickly, it's never going to be what it was, and I don't mean that in a positive way. Now, the White House is trying to do damage control after this interview dropped last night, right after that dinner between the president and May, something they thought wasn't going to be published until today, those remarks that the president made. Uh, they put out a statement, John, saying that the president likes Theresa May very much, that he respects her, but certainly you can't undo the damage that the president did with that interview. Now, today they are going to be spending a lot of time together, something that surely is going to be quite awkward uh, with a lot of tension there. They've got a working lunch. 
They're going to do a joint press conference later where they will surely face questions on the state of their relationship after this interview. The president just arrived at Checkers, uh, essentially uh, Camp David for the Prime Minister Theresa May, akin to that back in Washington. Uh, they did not open the greeting of the two leaders to the press, so we couldn't see what their first interaction was like after this interview dropped. But, John, you can bet it was very awkward. Very interesting. Closed press for that first greeting after this interview. Caitlin Collins, also interesting, the timing of the release. The White House believed it wouldn't come out until this morning, so they wanted to get through the party, the pomp and circumstance, before delivering the pummeling. So we have some live pictures from the streets of London. These are the protests uh, that are popping up across the city. That, of course, is the baby Trump, the balloon, the blimp that is getting so much attention here. The president not in London. Checkers, where he is right now, is about 40 miles outside the city. Want to bring in CNN's Nick Peyton Walsh. He, have li he is live underneath that balloon with the crowds in Parliament Square. Nick, what are you seeing? Well, John, it's beginning to get going here, really. And what's key is that that balloon behind me has about another 25 minutes permission to be up in the skies. That permission was granted by London Mayor Sadiq Khan for a short window, and it caused Donald Trump to say in that interview with the Sun that he, quote, feels unwelcome here and criticised the London Mayor's uh, stance on immigration, crime, uh, you name it, things he doesn't actually decide as London Mayor, but still perceived in Donald Trump's vision to be a weak spot. I should point out next to me here, overheating slightly in his gorilla suit is another likeness uh, of Donald Trump. This isn't allowed actually on Abingdon Green behind me itself because it doesn't have permission as a protest. But still, regardless, the fact that we have two mocking images of Donald Trump here, the closest that he or a likeness of him is going to get to Parliament is extraordinarily telling, John, because this is normally a place on lockdown for a US sitting president to be able to move around and see Buckingham Palace and Parliament. Instead, quite the opposite. He's not even remotely touching central London, apart from that US ambassadorial residence in Regent's Park, where he touched down briefly yesterday afternoon and is going to overnight, well, overnighted uh, yesterday. So remarkable change in the dynamic here. And we saw two of the aircraft, the Osprey half helicopter, half planes that have been ferrying his entourage around, fly over Parliament. You couldn't get a more stark contrast, frankly. The distance between this city, it's possibly going to erupt in protests in the hours ahead now. Tens of thousands of people, the occasional spotted uh, presence of pro-Trump supporters. There's some two shirtless tattooed men back there uh, with a lady expressing their pro-Trump views. Some people do find this display of uh, a sitting US president as a baby in a diaper to be disrespectful of the office, but still regardless, a busy day here on the streets. Police hoping it will remain calm. Back to you. All right, Nick Payton Walsh underneath that baby Trump balloon in Parliament Square, not far from where I am right now. Nick, thanks so much. Joining me now is Matthew Doyle. He was the political director for former British Prime Minister Tony Blair. Also with me, CNN chief international anchor Christian Amanpour. And just moments ago, Christian interviewed the London mayor, Sadiq Khan, very much at the center of this morning's controversy. We'll get to that in a moment. But Christian, I just want to make sure that our international audience and our American audience understands the significance of what I'm holding in my hands right now. This interview, which the president gave on Wednesday in Brussels, right? It was supposed to, they thought it was going to be released today. But this hit like a giant political explosion here. And for all the reasons you said, it's owned by Trump's friend, a very pro-Brexiter, pro-Trumper. Uh, pro he looks like he's got his talking points from Boris Johnson, all of that kind of thing. But you're absolutely right. Look, we've already established that President Trump is not on the normal spectrum of diplomacy and and what what foreign leaders do to each other and how they treat each other so just the fact that he gave that interview ahead of his uh visit you know briefing against the chief ally right the special relationship if we still believe in that briefing against the the the, the special relationship briefing against the mayor of london with whom he's had a long running feud ever since he as a candidate said he would ban all muslims from coming into the united states so that's the sort of context but i would say He's nothing if not consistent. Mm -hmm. He has upended both meetings. He arrived to the NATO meeting with this very unexpected full frontal assault on Angela Merkel and Germany, captive, controlled by Russia. That was just unprecedented language for every reason. And now he's doing the same thing with Theresa May. Who knows? It may end up just fine in the end. They may chat to each other and come out and have a joint press conference and it may be just fine. But those are his views. He is very concerned about a 
different colored reality in America, in Europe. We have demographic realities. We have people who are not like back to the old times. It's not just a majority white nation or world anymore. And he's he's mourning that. You can see what he said to the to, oh, to the oh, sun. Oh, I want to talk about that in just a second because I think those words are very very important and notable, but I want to stick to Theresa May if I can for a moment. You said, we don't know what we're going to see. Maybe they'll come out hand in hand, all smiles. I kind of doubt it, Matthew Doyle. Um, and the arrival at Checkers, we believe the president has arrived at Checkers. We thought that was going to be a public four camera moment, but they didn't show us pictures. And I don't know if that is because they wanted to perhaps hide the grimace that she might have been delivering. I mean, it's certainly unusual to have an arrival like that be off camera. Normally, that's one of your bog standard pictures that you'd expect to get on any trip like this. Look, I think the hope for Theresa May is that what we're seeing is Donald Trump in his kind of role where he personifies both bad cop and good cop at the same time. So he's come in now like a wrecking ball before the trip to basically smash things up and then he'll have the meeting with Theresa May and come out and say, oh, Theresa May has persuaded me that actually Britain's on the right path and there's the potential for a deal. I'm sceptical about that, to be honest, given the strength of the remarks that even for him it's hard for him to walk back from. And what's so incredible about this trip is that it does look like his script isn't being written by the National Security Council of the White House or by the State Department. His script is being written by Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson. These are precisely the domestic criticisms that Theresa May fears the most in terms of attacking her Brexit plans and them not being able to deliver the sort of trade deals that people wanted. Inside the Sun article, one of the things it does note by, by the writer there is that they didn't feel that the president listened to anyone anyway. It wasn't as if he was listening to his advisors. He did what he wanted, said what he wanted. He acted like an emperor, it says in this article, brushing away Sarah Sanders when she said the interview was over. It was supposed to be 10 minutes, ended up going 28. Fascinating. So, Christian, you spoke to Sadiq Khan. I did. The mayor of London here. The president directly criticized him for what he considers crime and terrorism taking place in London. But Sadiq Khan, the mayor, also directly addressed this confrontational approach the president has taken to Theresa May. He did. He, he talked, I mean, I specifically put to him, how did you feel when you saw this today? And here he is coming to your city, sort of bypassing it, and he's going to meet the prime minister. She may be in a different political party, but nonetheless, what do you think of it? This is what he said. I think a lot of us were, were surprised, not just in relation to the timing, but what he said during the uh, interview. I went to bed last night knowing there's this interview in the uh, Sun and woke up today to read uh, the interview. And uh, it must have been a very difficult evening for Prime Minister May uh, at the dinner she had with him uh, last night. But I think some of the things he said during the interview uh, will cause upset to Londoners and, and will explain, I suspect, why many Londoners, uh, and by the way, they include Londoners who are Americans, uh, will be protesting uh, today. So he talked about that, but he did actually refer to the blimp and the baby and this and that and the protests as well. And when we asked about it, when I asked him, I mean, do you think it's disrespectful to the office? Why, you know, why have you given permission? He said, look, we have a history. We're a democracy. We have a history of political protests. This is a political protest. Can you imagine, he said to me, cancelling a political protest in New York or Chicago or San Francisco or any such place? And of course, reminded me that when President Bush came here during the Iraq war, big protest. President Reagan during the, you know, height of the antagonism during the Cold War and wanting to put new nuclear missiles in Britain and elsewhere. They were big protests, but as he said, they weren't as thin-skinned and they nonetheless still came to the capital city. I'm just getting updates, Matthew, in my ear about some of the things we understand the president has been saying so far this morning. He's at Sandhurst, which is the Royal Military Academy. He visited there first for a tour and a look at the troops before going to Chequers. And I understand he said things along the lines of the special relationship is strong, the United States relationship with the UK continues to be strong, and we look forward to having a meeting on a number of issues, including trade and not. I think trying to make it clear that everything is normal, nothing <laughs> to see here, move along. It's all fine, you know, uh, as Theresa May is my best friend and, and so on. Look, this is part of the problem with the special relationship. Uh, partly in the nature of the world today, no one country has a special relationship with another. America has strategic relationships all around the world, and rightly so. And sometimes this kind of obsession with a special relationship can be somewhat distracting as a, as a, as a piece of rhetoric. But where it matters and where it comes into conflict is this is essentially the alliance of people and values that goes over generations. And what 
where it goes wrong is when it looks like there is a clash of the ideology and it becomes about the individuals that are concerned. And I think that's why you're going to see so many Londoners protesting on the streets today. And if my Facebook feed is anything good to go by, it's not the usual suspects who will be going to this, these protests today, but people who normally wouldn't go on a sort of political protest, precisely because, and Christiane was very diplomatic in her language, but, you know, to be blunt, the people in this country do regard the president's rhetoric as being racist and Islamophobic in the way that he talks about mm -hmm. the mayor individually, but also what's happening in Europe as a whole. Let's talk about that. And, and if we can, I want to play you the sound of what he said again, just so we fully understand what he's talking about here when he says that Europe, you are losing your culture. Listen to the president's statement there first. I think what's happened to Europe is a shame. I think the immigration, uh, allowing the immigration to take place in Europe is a shame. I think it changed the fabric of Europe. Mm. And unless you act very quickly, it's never going to be what it was. And I don't mean that in a positive way. You're changing the culture of Europe, changing the fabric. Think about what